Well, hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is The Kid bringing you another episode of StarCraft for Kids. And this is game number three between EG's Puma. Down here in the bottom left of Shakura's Plateau is the Blue Terran. And here in the top right, we have SKMC hailing from Korea. Uh, actually, both of these players are Korean, but EG's Puma is... Uh, Korean American, so you know we get to count uh, us foreigners. We get to count him as one of us. So once again, just an, a, a great matchup. Right now, it is tied between these two. SKMC won game number one uh, with a pretty aggressive push on duel on Daybreak, and then in game number two, he just wasn't able to use that same push to break Puma. And Puma's tanks on the high ground did a lot of good work, a lot of huge damage, and now bring us to game three on this probably one of my favorite maps in the StarCraft ladder pool. This is Shakura's Plateau. I think overall this is one of the most balanced maps overall. One of those that I think overall is is the least determined by race. Uh, I think that because, you know, with Zerg, uh, well with Terran and Protoss, you can very easily secure the second wall off down here uh, by this ramp if you want to. And then with Zerg, as much as the third base isn't incredibly easy, there are no rocks blocking them off, and in all reality your creep spread can be put around very easily, and they can be secured with uh, with that creep spread. So I think overall this is a great map, most likely we'll see both players at least get a second base up, I would doubt we'll see uh, a huge push that much that early in this game. And here we go, so let's go ahead and get into this game, we've got a barracks coming down by Puma along with his two supply depots we have a fairly we've got a decently early gas by uh, by MC with his two pylons just now throwing down his cybernetics not really chrono boosting out any units going ahead and you know still getting out his uh, still getting out his probes and you know this marine's going to go out and hopefully be able to get a little bit of scouting information for Puma. So while we're in this little bit of downtime let's go ahead and talk about this map a little bit. This is a great map uh, I think Protoss, one of the most, as much as I love this strategy, I don't feel like I see it enough. Protoss on this map love to do a series of sentry plays because what I've seen people do, and I just recently casted a game with Idra where this kind of happened, sentries were used to block off this ramp and basically it kept roaches and reinforcements from coming in to defend the base. I've also seen it where uh, Protoss players will bring in a warp prism full of sentries, they'll drop them right here, they'll block this off with those sentry force fields and then warp in zealots and just harass this base like it's their job. Now, it's not necessarily as effective against Terran because, uh, especially if the Terran goes for some sort of bio where they're getting medics out, medvacs out, then they can obviously just lift off and go into the base. and. Um, Obviously, they're just uh, Terran with all their range units. They can deal with it a little bit better than Zerg can. But, you know, that's something that wouldn't be uh, uncommon to see. Now, MC, go ahead. And, he's going to go ahead and start this game like he has with most, where he gets out an early Stalker and Zealot to put on a little bit of pressure uh, just to make it so it's not so easy for Puma to expand, although he is throwing down this command center already. Um, possibly just going to use this at first to get a couple more SCVs out unless he feels confident that he's got enough of an army to hold off any early aggression. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this into an orbital command basically immediately get that energy started stockpiling up so that he can begin dropping mules and getting a lot of that extra income. Alright so warp gate is almost done Puma and MC not necessarily using a ton of chrono boost on this on the cybernetic score. Go ahead and finishing up his third gas and dropping down two more gateways, are we going to see a fourth here, possibly for a fairly early push? Or okay, so he's just going to keep it with three with three gateways right now. Going to worry more about getting up the second nexus. Going to get out some more probes, do a little bit more macro, and then possibly see one of MC's standard two base pushes. And right now, Puma's going to be feeling pretty good. He's got his bunker up at the main base. This is basically these stalkers aren't going to be able to see it right away, so it will get the first shot on them which will be very beneficial and he's got enough marines here to, to deal with these two stalkers but at the same time he's not going to be able to get any real map control right now these stalkers are going to be able to handle uh, well they would have been able to handle those marines until the additional ones came out and if MC not careful enough 
losing a stalker to that push. Beautifully done by uh, Puma right there. Now, you might think that losing one stalker is not a big deal, but this early in the game, especially when you went economy for an economy build, a macro style build this early, you do not want to lose that stalker. Now, thankfully, MC does have sentries at his base with sufficient energy that he could wall this off, but you really want to hold on to those um, to those stalkers early in the game. And here we go. Brilliant by MC. He's going to go ahead and throw this down right here. He's going to have an observer pretty soon. Most likely we'll see him rally it down here. And that means that he can warp in Zealot straight into the base and possibly even some uh, some sentries which like I said earlier he could use to wall off this ramp right here and I don't actually know if Puma can yeah Puma can actually see this so it'll be up to him to, to actually go pick it off we'll see if he actually does anything with that and look at this MC gonna go ahead and push out a little bit now I don't think we do we have any no we don't have a Twilight Council yet so blink will not be coming up around anytime soon but the observer is gonna be done here momentarily and for now, we're just going to see this pylon used to warp things in over here. And Puma, got to be careful. We don't. These Marines need to get back to this front door quickly or else this push is going to be very dangerous. Watch for the force fields around this bunker to keep them from be uh, keep it from being repaired. And here we go. This is, exact this is very similar to what we saw in game number one where MC pushed in to take out as much as he could, only that one was much more lethal. This time he's not going to be able to push into the main base. Puma just has way, way too many Marines. And I really like using the factory right here, using it as sort of a uh, sort of a wall of its own just to make sure that these Zealots can't get good surrounds. They have to all funnel in through here or here. This is going to keep their surface area down so they're not going to do as much damage. And it's going to allow these Marines just to focus them down so quickly. And one thing that I'm finding really... I don't know if I agree with it from Puma, is he's taking a lot of time to get any kinds of upgrades with these Marines. I mean, these Marines right now are 0-0 at the 10 minute mark. Now granted, he does he's just now gonna be getting well, he's gonna be getting combat shields in the next in-game minute. But he doesn't have Oh, he does have stim. Okay, I, I guess I missed that. But so that'll make it very easy for him to do drops, which he is working on right now. Let's see if Puma act if uh, MC actually notices this coming. And he is pulling his army back, so he should be okay handling this. He does actually have a couple stalkers waiting, so either he saw this coming or his spider senses were tingling, and uh, he just wanted to make sure he was safe. Now, as far as upgrades go, we are going to see Thermal Lance coming out right now uh, in the next couple minutes, being chrono boosted out with a Colossus. And here we go. The medvac was spotted. This is going to make it uh, so that really Puma has to attack on two fronts. Ooh, and MC being a little sloppy there, getting pretty supply blocked. Had to throw down three pylons all at once. And here we go. Let's see what Puma can do here. He's going to drop. Oh, and this is brilliant. He's going to drop right here so the force fields can't stop the uh, can't stop the Marines from advancing in. That's really smart play. And just even though he's not doing a lot of physical damage right here right now, he is confining MC to his base, and he has basically complete map control. And he's forcing MC to play very defensively. And all this time, he's building his third. He's building his third base. And now, for those of you who might be a little newer to StarCraft, maybe you're, or maybe you're just having a hard time knowing how to expand. You're, you know, you're a little nervous to take your second, or possibly your third base. This is how you do it. You go ahead, push out with an army, put yourself right on the front door of the of your opponent. And that's when you go ahead and throw down your third base. You want to make sure you know where their army is so they're not going to pop in and take your base out right away. And look at this. MC going to do a bit of a, of a surround here of his own. He pulled this army down here. Let's see if he actually gets a little bit of a sandwich in on Puma. But here's the risk. If Puma were to take this army on and then move up here, it would be very, very bad for MC. MC surprisingly not really having any upgrades right now. He did get, he is working on one armor. He's going to have zealot legs and just now starting uh, weapons level one. Puma is on one attack. He's working on one armor. And now getting those Vikings, a good idea. Going to help him to really deal with those Colossi a lot easier. And getting a Ghost Academy. I'm interested to see what he does with this. If he just uses it for EMPs, which... I don't think would be incredibly useful right now. There are a lot of Colossi and Zealots in this army, and Zealots and Colossus not entirely 
Uh, I mean, obviously they do take damage from the EMP, but it's not necessarily something that I would worry that much about, especially since he does have Vikings to deal with those Colossus. I would love to see him go for nukes, though, but I don't know if that's actually going to happen. He doesn't have the cloaking or the Mobius uh, reactor to help to supplement those nukes. Basically, if the ghost doesn't have cloak, they're not going to be nuking for obvious reasons. Uh, if you see a ghost in your base and you know that there's a nuke coming down, you only really... It's a no-brainer right there. But anyway, so he's going to go ahead and turn this one into a planet... This command center into a planetary fortress. It's going to make it a little bit tougher for MC to, uh, to take this base out. And MC going to go ahead and take his third base as well. So pretty much right now, both players just kind of trying to keep each other at home and trying to find out how to engage each other. The key for MC will be using these uh, sentries to really cut the army in half and then basically supplement the damage that these colossi do. It'll make it harder for them to run away and these colossus splash damage will do a lot, will hit a lot more units at once. And this is a really dangerous looking army by MC right now. There are a lot of zealots in here. But he needs to make sure that he doesn't overextend. And here we go. The Viking's going to get some beautiful volleys off on these Colossus. There goes one. Let's see if he can get a second one down quickly. And here we go. Third one on its way down. Nicely done. Let's see how he holds this. He's got three Vikings left still hammering away on this Colossus. Getting five kills. And MC leaves the game as the final Colossus goes down. Beautifully played by our Terran player. Puma representing us foreigners beautifully, even if he is Korean, uh, holding that push nicely. You'll notice that, let's see, I'm going to go ahead and pull back that engagement just really fast. Just so we can, it, I think this is what made it so he could win this engagement. Uh, go forward just a little bit. Okay, let's, fa let's fast forward. Okay. So, we see the Protoss army coming in. And this is one thing that you gotta keep in keep in mind whenever you're a Protoss player using Colossus. Vikings have extremely long range, and look at this. He's making sure to attack from right here. So let's look at the vision of our Protoss player as this is all going on. He can't get good shots off against those Vikings while this is going on because they're over this high ground, which is beautiful for for Puma. This means that he gets the first shot with those Vikings. He's going to do a lot of damage to these Colossi before the Stalkers can take them out and all this time holding on to this high ground. That was the game changer in that engagement. So once again guys I hope you liked this. Go ahead use these things to your advantage. Even if you play me I want to see you use them. So once again this is StarCraft for Kids and I hope you see, I see you guys the next game.